Hey teacher friends, how are you doing? It's your girl Georgia. Welcome to Georgia's Lifestyle. If you are new over here, a special welcome to you. I hope after watching this video, you will like what you hear and so you will hit that subscribe button, turn on the post notification bell so you are the first to be notified whenever I upload a video and also if you have a comment, you can leave it in the comment section. If you are one of my subscribers, I am so happy that you are watching another video. Yes, so guys, in today's video, this is a part two to the last video I uploaded about taking your family here to the UAE. So guys, you are moving to the UAE to teach and you are going to be taking your kids with you. Here are a few things to take note of. As I said in uh, part one of taking your family here to the UAE, school fees can be really expensive. So when you are given a job offer, you first have to find out if the school covers the school fee or you will have to find all of the school fee. Right guys? So again, there are some schools that pays, that the school fee is free for your child and that is in the case in which the child will attend the school that you are working right so again the school fee might be free for your child if the child attends the school that you are working again depending on the school where you work this school might say okay we only give you a percentage of the cost meaning they might say um, as an employee, you will pay 25% of the cost or the school will cover 25% of the cost. And I'm just giving an example now, right? So again, your child might be able to attend the school that you are working and this might be a school that says school fee is free or you have to pay a part of the school fee. On the other hand, your child might not be able to attend the school that you are working. Why is that so? There are some schools here in the UAE that caters to only Emirati kids. So you might be teaching at a school that caters to only Emirati kids. Therefore, your child cannot attend the school that you teach. However, some schools give you a percentage of or they give you sorry i should say they give you an allowance for your child's school fee so you will have to get your child registered in another school you will have to find a school for your child and maybe the amount that the school gives you towards the school fee is not enough so you will have to pay the extra Right? So what I'm saying is you might be working at a school that caters only to Emirati kids, native kids, and they give you some money. They say, okay, in that case, your child cannot attend that school. So they'll say, okay, we're giving you 25,000 dirhams or 28,000 dirhams towards your child's school fee. So you're going to have to find a school to enroll your child in. When you find a school, the school fee might be more than what your school gave you. So you will have to pay that extra. So guys, that is something to consider. It therefore means that if your child is not attending the school where you work, it means that a school bus will be dropping your child home. You're going to have to make sure that there is someone at home to receive your child. When a school bus drops a child home, somebody, an adult or teenager, somebody has to be there to receive the child or else they won't let the child off the school bus. So if you come here to the UAE to work and your child or children, they're not attending the school you work, that is something that you will have to take into consideration how, who will receive your child when you get home. Otherwise, you might have to enroll your child in uh, some afternoon programs. Okay, let's say your child is attending the school where you work. 
this is something that you have to consider it depends on the school where you work and what their policy is after dismissal for kids because here in the uae kids are dismissed um, sometimes half an hour earlier or 45 minutes earlier than the staff will you be working at a school um, that allows you to keep your child um, with you after school dismisses because you will, you will be responsible for your child then um, I'm, I have heard of cases, yes, where that is not allowed. Um, so you'll have to take all of that into consideration too, if you're able, because you might have meetings after school, um, professional development workshops and so on. Um, is there a place you can leave your child or will your school allow you to um, keep your child with you after? Because the total supervision of the child will be your responsibility so those are some things that you will have to think about when you decide to take your child here to the UAE okay so let's say your school does not cater to family can your family visit you while you are working here oh sure yes your family can um, acquire a visitors visa tourist visa and um, come to the UAE and stay with you. Some schools might say your family can stay with you for a month, two months, three months, and so on, but definitely, yes. If it is that they won't be moving here with you, they can always come on a tourist visa and visit from time to time. Likewise, um, if they won't be joining you at the same time when you are coming, it is still important that your school is aware of the age children that you have, if you are married and all of that. But that is something they normally ask in the initial stages of the interview. They will ask you, do you have kids? Are you married? Will they be joining you? And so on. So even if they won't be joining you, it's still important to include them um, in the application while you're signing up the offer letter and all of that. It's important to include them because if it is that they won't be coming with you at the same time, you want to know that the benefit is still there so that whenever you are ready to take them, the school is aware of that. How often will you as the teacher be able to travel home? So schools normally provide a return airfare after one year of working with the school. So they will pay your initial fare, airfare to come to the UAE. And then after the year is completed, they give you a return summer, summer trip, right? They give you a return summer trip. If you want to travel outside of the summer period, then you are responsible for your airfare. So for winter break, for spring break, or whatever holidays might come in between, you are responsible for your airfare then. But the school, there are some schools that um, give you the money to buy your ticket, and there are some schools that um, they do the booking, right? Um, not everybody gets the same amount of money towards their airfare. Why is that so? It because I might be traveling to a far destination than you. Um, my flight can be like, you know, I'm, I'm Jamaican, so I am 14 hours to, to America and then another um, three, almost four hours to Jamaica, right? So I would get more airfare than someone who lives, let's say, for example, in India, somewhere that's closer, right? But, but however, your school will either give you an, um, a part, yes, because my first school where I worked, the money I got for my return airfare each summer, that wasn't even a fraction of my airfare. I had to put so much on it. Yes, I had to put more than half, three times, four times the amount of what I was given, right? So even though you have to take some of those things into consideration, guys, you have to ask what is the amount yes because it might be that the amount that they give for airfare it doesn't cover your full airfare and then again it depends on the route that you will be traveling another thing to consider is that you have to decide on which curriculum you want your child to do 
Uh, so for example, you might be teaching at a British curriculum school, um, but you want your child to attend an American curriculum school. So that's another case in which your child might not um, be able to attend the school that you are working and that again it depends on your preference so lots of different curricula schools are here um, it depends on what your preference is there are indian curriculum schools here there are pakistani curriculum school canadian uh, british american and yeah, those are the ones I can remember. So that's something that you need to take into consideration um, which curriculum you'd like your child to be doing if it is that um, your child is not able to attend the school in which you work. Uh, what size apartments um, do schools provide for family? So um, some of them provide um, your family, right? Two bedrooms. Uh, three bedrooms and then there are some schools with, with some really huge apartments accommodations that up to four bedrooms and so on the space is really big um, but yes the minimum like for a family is two bedrooms right and so you might have you come you might be coming with three kids and it's a two-bedroom apartment that you are given so um, they have to fit you just have to make them fit if that's what uh, they provide so that's something else to take into consideration again there are some schools that don't provide um, the accommodation however they give you the allowance right they give you the accommodation amount so um, after arriving here some of them they house you for putting hotels or wherever for like one or two weeks and then you are responsible for finding an apartment that can be very tedious so those are some things that you need to take into consideration so finally you have to look at your salary see how much you are getting um, look at your what the expenses are that you will have for example food um, tuition if tuition is not free and uh, yeah money for medical well of course you'll have insurance but the uh, most importantly you have to think about your, the salary that you'll be given and if you'll be able to pay the school fee from it and uh, for food if you're going to have to get transportation um or you're just going to be taking the bus or the taxi you have to factor all of those um there are some schools that cover the utilities so you don't have to pay anything and then there are some schools that say you have to pay the utility which includes the water or the air condition and the electricity yes yeah, so but it's normally just like one cost um i think the most you would pay is like 500 dirhams uh, i don't think well depends on the size family but um like let's say roughly 500 dirhams and then you will have to have um internet and internet is like 400 dirhams maximum so you have to factor all of those costs and see if the seller will be able to cover you taking your family here um especially if only one spouse um if your spouse will be coming with you and you are the only one who will be working I hope this video um, you find it helpful informative um, if you do of course don't forget to give the video a like and uh, as always you can leave your comment in the comment section and I'll try to answer as best as possible thank you so much for watching another video take care of yourselves God bless you and see you in another video